life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. Listen, I'm feeling mushy over here. Mushy? Why are you mushy, girl? I'm feeling so mushy because we're talking about our our story and you're sitting, we're, just so you guys know, we're sitting at our kitchen table, we're staring into each other's eyes and we're talking about all of the reasons why we love each other. To be fair, I'm actually looking over your shoulder outside <laughs> at the neighbor's house. Oh yeah. Do you want to tell them what our neighbor's house looks like? We have an interesting neighbor. Mm-hmm. They have giant, they, they well... They have a tree in their yard. <laughs> oh, my God. That is not interesting. <laughs> no. What's interesting is they are a major landmark in uh, Redding, California, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> they have giant... Uh, uh, concrete? Concrete bricks. Plant pillars. Yeah. They're they're large. They're like two foot high by three to four foot long, somewhere in there. Maybe they're only two foot, maybe. Yeah. They're about two foot high. Anyway. I mean, the but they, they, they go all around the house, and, and each one of them has a, a commandment on them. Yes. For a total of 10 commandments. It's good. In case I forget, I'm not going to murder you later. Yeah. Sometimes I am constantly reminds me. Call of Duty and I look over and it says thou shall not kill. <laughs> I think of the irony of that oh. statement. Uh huh. But if you kill fake people, does it count? It doesn't count. Mm. Not in Call of Duty. I mean, I don't it's know. For the That's up for the debate. We could yeah. talk about video games later. Yeah, we could. What are we talking about today? <laughs> We're talking about the mushy things. The mushy things. The mushy things. I'm huh? going to catch people up. In our last episode, we talked about me and Justin meeting and us starting to like each other a little bit. And then Justin breaking Ooh, up with me yeah, and saying, never, soul. ever, ever, ever will I marry you. Never, ever will I ever. Never, marry. ever have I have. Have <laughs> I? <laughs> yes. He said, nope. We absolutely nothing will happen. We broke up even though we had never actually dated, but we had faded across the fake mm-hmm. dating line. Fake dated. Mm-hmm. Yep. Back and forth. That's what we did. And so part of what we want to jump into today is what happened afterwards. What? Because we left you on a cliffhanger. I know. None of you guys knew. What? Did they stay together? Did they separate? What happened? what's going to happen? Yeah. So I do want to start with you breaking up with me was one of the best things that happened to me. You're welcome. (laughs) I could do it again if it helped. (laughs) Uh, No. No, thank you. Okay. I will never let you do that again. Well, it worked the first time. I will kill you before... You oh, me. well, you heard heard it here first. <laughs> if Justin disappears, <laughs> he's in the backyard buried somewhere. Yep. He planned on walking out. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get away from me. A hundred percent. Okay. So um, help me. <laughs> <laughs> when you broke up with me, it was um, obviously I went through a lot of grief and it was really painful. But there was something I actually had several girls around me. And this is kind of ironic, whose husbands had also told them they would never, ever ma- get, marry them, and then they ended up married. I think they followed suit after me. They were married before us. And then they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but so um, I had a couple of them talk to me, and they said, you know what? This is the best time in your life. You get to come alive. Find your groove. Yeah. Figure out what about you is magic. Like, this is a great Who are you? Find your little lioness roar. Yeah, exactly. Roar. (laughs) That's what I came up with. That's Uh how I cooked you. Roar. So I actually, um, I did. I chopped my hair off because I was like, okay, I'm not living for men. I'm I'm living which for me. Was, which was which uh, around that time was significant because uh, Britney Spears, I think, around there chopped her <laughs> hair off, and is a statement I guess all women were making. <laughs> I don't need men. Why do I need this hair? Goodbye, hair. It's such a weird thing. I'm just saying. Like, no, you why don't did understand. I, why am I not? I'm not living for men. I'm getting rid of my women hair. Women are taught. I'm not living for you. That's why I went bald. <laughs> <laughs> women are taught that men only like women with long hair. Oh. That's they like, were? Yeah. Is that still? still mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a thing. You're like, it's a cultural norm that you've heard. And so chopping your hair off is like, now no guy's going to want to like you because yeah. short hair. But that didn't make that not no, happen. Didn't, it didn't ruin it for yeah. me. But the thing, I actually, I'm too magnetic. Yeah. I actually had a pretty good deliverance, like an emotional deliverance. It wasn't like an exorcism, like, Wah! it was just like a, a deliverance of 
fear and a shedding of fear and getting suddenly feeling freedom from when I was sitting in that bar bar barbershop or hair style yeah yeah yeah. you started you decided to let go yeah I was like no I'm living for me I'm coming alive what do I like I have like what do I how to do that so that was really good and I watched empowering women movies I watched like Elizabeth one and two oh yeah, yeah was, tell me, what are other empowering women films? Because, you know, like when you ask a guy about empowering man films, it's going to be like, you know, uh, Gladiator, The Patriot, um, yeah. Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> you just like one. that one because you look like Die Bruce. Die Hard 1 and 2, yeah. yeah. You know, Bruce. Yeah. Today, Justin said, you look like a homeless woman and I look like Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> What's Bruce Willis doing with a homeless woman? <laughs> That's so re- that's real things Justin it's quite says. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I watched empowering women movies. I I started dancing, and that's a funny thing. But I was so self conscious before. It was just me learning to get my own body and not care what people think. And there was really a codependency with you that got broken. I think up until that point, and this is a big thing that single single people do is they. I was trying to get you to choose me. Yeah. It wasn't do I want to choose you. It was. I need to get you to choose me. A lot of women do that. I think men do too. A lot of men do that. <laughs> <laughs> men and women both do that. A lot of people do that. Yes. That is correct. And so instead of like dating with like, well, what do I think about you? It's more, I need to win you. I need to know that I've got you. I hooked you. I need to, my right. self-esteem wants the boost of knowing that I have conquered this. And for me, I was always drawn to emotionally unavailable men. Even Which after we were married. Which my plan was working perfect. <laughs> yeah, totally. This is why. <laughs> Go away. I'll never be with you. Yes, yeah, so that was the perfect <laughs> situation for me. But I had always been like, if I can get a guy that doesn't like me too much to fall for me, then I've won. It's not, do I want to be with that guy? Yeah. It's not, do I think we have good qualities that connect? Am I looking at them practically? It's just, I want the power of knowing I hooked you. Yeah. And that, like you said, I mean, that's both in men and women. I know so many guys that like, they do everything they can to be Mr. Awesome. And then once they get the woman's attention and they win, they're like, meh, and they walk away. It's an endorphin hit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm special. And it's, it's an ego boost. Yeah. It's, it's a way of creating self-worth. Yes, it doesn't last down to it. No. and it destroys people, yeah. but it does have a momentary but, effect. But it's a fun little game while it lasts, right? <laughs> but so that broke. When we broke up, it was like, I'm not trying to get you anymore because I can't have you. <laughs> like it just, there's no. I couldn't get got. Yep, nope. And so I was like, okay, I'm done. And so I really started thinking like, I believe that then if you're saying no to me, and this is, I try to tell people this all the time. A no in dating does not uh, is not a value of self worth. It is a compatibility statement. Yeah, and a lot of people do take that as an identity statement. Oh, rather like than a I must not be worthy of Justin. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm not defining my worth based on you not saying that you'll never not marry me. You, yeah. I'm like, no, I have value and I have worth, and so I like grabbed a hold of my worth instead of giving it away to you, and was like, which I is think way I'm more great. attractive. Like at the end of the day. It, um, a powerful man wants a woman who's powerful in her own right. Yeah. Like if, if you truly are a man who has confidence inside of yourself and I'm not saying I was, Oh, oh, so powerful and confident. I'm just saying like, there's, there's an allure to another human being who actually believes in themselves and loves themselves for who they are and not trying to live for you. And when someone's trying to live for you, that feels needy. Totally. Like, Oh, you need me to approve of you so you can be good, good with yourself. Oh, great. This feels like hell. Oh yeah, that's I tell people all the time. Sexiness is confidence. It's real. You want to be desirable. Learn to love yourself. Yeah, it's really attractive. And so that's I I did that in the journey when you had broken up with me. I was getting back to like I believe I'm worthy of love and I like me and I feel proud of who I am. And so actually on the journey out of that, no longer was I like can I get you? I was like, "Mm, would he be worth, like, do I want him? Because now I believe I am going to get something good. And I actually remember struggling with that with every guy I broke up with or that broke up with me. There was this feeling of like, is there going to be somebody better? Is there going to be, I remember. That is such a common question that goes on in so many people's heads, especially people that we work with in our offices are talking about their future of, Oh, I don't know. But what if I choose them and there's someone better? 
And then I look at each one of them and I think you're lucky that they're even <laughs> into you. <laughs> you're not getting better. Settle, settle. Settle. Quickly. <laughs> but I had a lot of poverty mentality. And so if you have poverty mentality and somebody breaks up with you, you're devastated. Absolutely. Like that was my one there's shot nothing. at happiness. There's no more. Now there's no other options. Yeah. But the abundant mentality is like there are great things for me in every season and in every area of my life. And so if Justin is not going to choose me, that does not mean I am not going to be chosen. It says nothing about my choo- choosability. Choos- my choosability. My choosability. <laughs> yeah. So it was a it was a really empowering season. I am forever grateful that we went through it. Something broke open in me. And like I had said last episode, you were so good at speaking truth about identity over me Yeah. when we met, which I love. There is a verse that talks about how um, the church becomes the pure and spotless bride because of Jesus washing them with the water of his word. And I remember when that, I mean, that sounds so cheesy, but not cheesy. That's the wrong word. <laughs> Well, I think what you're trying to say, I mean, it, it could sound weird or fluffy, but what you're trying to say is like, there is something that transforms us as truth hits us. Uh-huh. There's a power in it. So mm-hmm. when you look at the idea, like, like even that scripture to not go in depth into it, but when you look at it, it's like Jesus is looking at a people that were messy. Totally. We're all humans. Like yep. humanity is messy. And something that changes and uh, washes away the things that feel so messy, all the brokenness, Mm -hmm. is a higher truth that comes in and says, yeah, you may feel like garbage right here, but the truth is... This is who you really are. This is who you really are. And like even in our relationship, I was looking at you going, no, actually you're a princess. You were made with power and strength. No, but... But you're strong and you're powerful and you're meant to be a yep. leader and you're meant to be a woman who teaches other women what it, what it is to be beautiful and, and love yourself and all of that. And so I actually um, was expressing things that that vision for who you really were beyond yep. what what you saw what yourself. What I thought. And, and it was an invitation into you becoming it was. that. Yeah. And I would say this, uh, and I tell everybody, if you're married or you're not married, um, if you're dating or if you're just with your friends the number one way to impact somebody is to tell them who they are because words change you. Whether you're a words of affirmation person or not, words change you. Sure. So you had spoke so many words over me that um, when we broke up, it was like, will I believe this? Yeah. Do am, I, am I going to choose to own this now? Yeah. And I actually remember having this intuition where I heard in, internally you have been asking Justin to win a battle he will never be able to win. Like I cannot look to you to be my source of identity and value. And like, I can't ask you to tell me I'm beautiful if I'm not willing to believe it. Right. And it's like, it's kind of like the concept of, and a lot of people have this, they have kind of like this, um, how do I put it? Like a black hole syndrome inside of them. It's almost like this black hole that exists inside of their being. And it doesn't matter how many compliments and affirmations and yep. truths are thrown in their direction. It goes right in. And well, let me back up. I call it the bottomless cookie monster syndrome. This is an easy <laughs> oh, way to put so it. you have so many names for this. Mm-hmm. You deal with this a lot? <laughs> yes. It's like the idea of the cookie monster. No matter how many cookies you gave him, he's like, no, 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 more nom, cookies. Nom, 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 nom. And he could keep eating cookies. And you're like, where are all these cookies going? Why right. is he not satisfied? So you could have told me, I'm, you're yeah. beautiful, you're beautiful, you're yeah. beautiful, you're and, beautiful. And, and, and I find that across the board in marriages, uh, whether it be a man or a woman. You yeah. Know, especially I have a lot of conversations, though, with women who are just like, I don't feel lovable. I don't feel beautiful in his eyes. And this guy is doing everything he can do to tell her like, you're beautiful, you're lovable, all this stuff. And it just doesn't matter because there's a cookie monster inside that yeah. hasn't been dealt with. So I and had so to punch the cookie monster in the face. I yeah. had to say, get out of here. Yeah, you I'm going to eat why. those cookies and I'm going to like them. Yeah. I don't know that that's So we have to resolve something inside of ourselves. Part of that part of your journey was you learning how to resolve something inside of yourself and go, how am I just going to be satisfied with me yep. regardless of him or what any other human being says about yeah, me? Yeah, it was kind of like, hey, what Justin thinks about me isn't the end all be all. No. What I think about me matters now I've got to say I there was a tremendous amount of transformation that happened for me in that season but there were also like I didn't magically now never struggle with no not at all that 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 was it was just ongoing in our relationship they were growing but it was was the the next step of the journey yeah 
Yeah, it was like a springboard. Yeah. First you brought me truth and then I actually had to learn to grab a hold of truth for myself. Buy it and believe in it. Yeah. Yep. So um, I remember one day. Which I, shatters desperation too. It does. If yeah. I don't need you to tell me that everything good about me and I can believe it, then I can actually just choose you. Not because my cookie monster needs you, but yeah. because I actually want to choose and, you. And that's part of the journey of love between two people is I'm so, um, I find that I'm so in love with myself. I actually value myself. I have worth for myself so much so that I'm not going to need you as a source. And so I can love you in ways that are f sacrificial. Yeah. Ultimately. Uh -huh. Anyways. Okay. So. We are in the season. You've broken up with me. You said never, ever. I killed it in my heart. So one day I wake up and I feel this now. I'm about, I'm going to sound so fluffy this whole, this whole podcast. I'm a fluff monster. Yeah, you are. I should be like hashtag fluffy Abby. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just say fluffy things. But mm -hmm. so our whole friendship, when you were thinking about me, I could feel like a <laughs> love cloud. I if know. you saw me, I'm shaking my head. Totally. I, I think it's hysterical. She calls it a love cloud. It was like, it was I was like this feel, emotion of love all over her. Yeah. Like an atmosphere of love would just drift over me and settle on me where I would feel just a wave Emotions of love. Of care and. I, yeah, it was crazy. And um, my coworkers thought I was psychic because I would be like, oh my gosh, Justin loves me. And then within a minute you would call and just be like, I was just calling Text, to tell you I love you. Flowers would show up flowers for Flowers would show up, yeah. email. It was like I could feel it happening. Yeah, you could feel the connectedness of, of my love for you. Yeah. yeah, it was like a weird thing. That's cute and fluffy. <laughs> it is, but, but it was real. It was interesting. It was real. We, yeah. had, we have like a psychic connection. Yeah. We have like some kind of spiritual. Get out of my brain. <laughs> Why are you in my head? Get out of my feelings. I didn't yeah. invite you there. Yeah, uh -huh. you did. So um, I wake up one morning. So those had stopped after I said yes, no more. Totally. But I wake up one morning and I feel the love cloud drift over me and settle in. <laughs> Justin looks at me like I'm so ridiculous. <laughs> um, and uh, It's I the was... things I delight in. <laughs> You being you. I'm, you be you, boo. You be you. Um, and so I sit there and I'm like, what is this love cloud? And I'm like, no, get out of here. Because I've like tried to work so hard to kill mm -hmm. it. And every mm -hmm. time I had thoughts of Justin and me pop into my brain, I'd like punch them out. No. <laughs> and so I feel this love cloud. And I'm like, what is happening? And, and I hear on the inside, Justin had a dream about his wedding. You were in it. And when he comes home, he'll be able to love you. Now, that was a pretty big surprise for me because I didn't know where you were. I didn't know you weren't home. I mean, I hadn't heard from you for months. I mean, the last time we saw each other was probably a month or two prior to that. Randomly ran into each other at Ikea. Yeah, it in, was in real Burbank. awkward. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hey. Oh. I know. We were both like, oh. <laughs> And the people we were with made us say hi to each other, but that was uh -huh. pretty much it. That was really funny. Uh -huh. was so we moment. hadn't talked. And so I have this love cloud and then I hear this thing and I think that is so bizarre. But then that day you did call me. I did call you that day. Mm -hmm. Tell them what happened. Why are you being so bossy? <laughs> so anyways, this is very interesting. Did I, when did I call you in that day? It wasn't late. It was night. the it afternoon. Was a, it was sometime in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Well, I We're was like old people because that detail does not matter. No, it doesn't. <laughs> does it? Well, I was thinking it was part of another story, uh, yeah. and then uh, that's why I asked. Uh, anyways, so we have to back up. The night before, I'm in Las Vegas, you know, uh, gambling all my money away <laughs> and getting just <laughs> drugged out of my mind. It was no. crazy. No, no, it wasn't. But I was in Vegas. I was in Vegas actually doing things that were not destructive. I was over there uh, with that itinerant speaker that I'd traveled with. And, and um, so he had some, some speaking engagements over there. And uh, that night I had two dreams. I had, I had a singular dream that was broke up in two, par two parts, actually. So first part of the dream, my mom comes up to me. And she goes, hey, Justin, I sent out all the wedding invitations. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> How could you send out wedding invitations? I'm not even dating anyone. I'm not going to get married anytime soon. Who am I getting married to? And I'm freaking, right? And my mom's like, I don't know. I don't know who you're getting married to. I just know I was supposed to send them out. They're out. They're done. Whatever. So I wake up from that dream and I'm like, whoa, what's going on? This is so weird. And that dream 
happened in March. For whatever reason, I knew very clearly it was March. Go back to sleep, and all of a sudden, I, I wake up, and there's this huge event taking place inside of this coliseum. And I'm told that it's my wedding day and I am losing my mind. I'm like, how is it my wedding day? It can't be my wedding day. And they're like, oh yeah, it's your wedding day. You're getting married today. And I'm like, who, who am I getting married to? And they're just like, I don't know. You're just getting married. And so I have this they very, they hand you a text, don't they? Well, they did in a second. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Hey, 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 whose story is this? Hey, oh, hey. Yeah, this yeah. is my story. You get you back out of my story. <laughs> all right. I just got all New Yorker on you. Yeah. Like my cousin, Sean. Um, so anyways, I mean, this is going to sound kind of interesting or weird, but I, inside the dream, I go into like what felt like an open vision. I mm -hmm. all of a sudden see this thing and, and I see inside this Coliseum and Jesus is dressed wearing a fancy tuxedo, <laughs> right? <laughs> fancy tuxedo, Jesus. And he's standing um, in front of everyone and he's just been patiently waiting for an incredible amount of time. Mm -hmm. And I, because I, I, I had had this this fear that had overcome me after I was told that it was my wedding day. I'm like, what if I get up on stage and no one shows up on that stage and I look like an idiot in front of everyone because I'm just like waiting for this bride that doesn't exist. And uh, um, all of a sudden, Jesus begins to speak. This thunderous voice is just echoing throughout this coliseum, and he's like. Uh, far too long I've waited, far too long I've been mocked. Now is the time, now is the time, I'll have my bride, now is the time. And it was like, there was something in the dream that was shaking me at the very core of my being as he was saying this. Like, And something about me understood the concept of patiently, sacrificially waiting for something um, and, and, and choosing to buy in to that thing that you're waiting for. Yeah. And so I come out of the, this open vision that is the best way to describe it. I, I come, I snap back into it inside this dream. And this guy hands me this tuxedo and shoves me through these Coliseum doors. And I walk through these Coliseum doors. And honestly, I start freaking out because I'm looking around for all the girls I've dated in the past. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, please tell me it's not her. And please tell me it's not her or her. <laughs> and I keep seeing them one after another sitting in a chair. And You're I'm like, like Ooh. oh. <laughs> oh, I, I really dodged a bullet on that one. <laughs> so as, as I'm, as I'm going down this, um, I have this inner dialogue monologue with myself, uh, carrying the tuxedo to go back and get dressed. And I say to myself, I don't know, you know, who's going to show up, but if no one shows up, I'd ask Abby. I'd ask okay. Abby because Abby in, in the dream, the logic in my dream was this idea that she is so wonderful. I love who she is and she's filled with adventure I and am. like on the spot asking her to marry me and come up on that stage feels like she would just jump into that <laughs> opportunity and, and join me on that journey. You don't know me. I probably would have done that. Probably would have. Yep. So this dream, um, the, the other interesting detail to this dream is it happened to be in May. So the first part of the dream was in March. This part of the dream's in May. I wake up from the dream and I end up waking my boss up and I'm like, dude, dude, wake up, wake up. And he's like, well, what's happening? I'm trying to sleep. Leave me alone. Go out to bed. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I was like that obnoxious kid that walks in on his parents. is like, daddy, it's 5 a.m. <laughs> Can we watch cartoons? Yep. Um, and I tell him the dream and then I say, here's the deal, man. I know that I'm not getting married, <laughs> <laughs> but my life is taking an entire change shift. Yeah. Everything's going to happen between March and May. I'm going to be leaving this job position. You need to go figure out, you need to go start looking for a new assistant That's for crazy. everything. To which point he's like, Oh, go back to sleep. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Why that happen? <laughs> But I knew in every part of my being, this is what was about to happen with my life. Only I didn't know what this was. I just knew totally. it meant leaving Something is changing. Uh -huh, between March and May. So for whatever reason, I haven't talked to Abby in months. And I get this... Unction? Un this wild... Un I don't know if it's even an unction. I just, it won't leave me alone. Yeah. I'm like, I got to tell Abby all about this. This is a crazy dream, which makes no sense. No. You sound like a crazy ex-boyfriend totally. type yes, deal you do. to call you up. Yeah. But I just did. I was like, hey, here's my dream. Yeah. And thank goodness I'd had that premonition that morning because that would have thrown me for quite a loop, like not talking to you for a couple months. And then you and just, I just like, call. I have like, a dream to tell you about my wedding. As an adult right now, I'd be like, 
fool, what are you doing calling that girl? Do not call her and tell her that stuff. And I listen to it and I hear the dream and I'm like, clearly that dream means I'm not the one for you. Because if there's ever going to be a dream that somebody has about I me. I ain't no backup plan. I ain't no backup plan. Uh-uh, I know plan B. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> like, I'm the girl that, like, the light, the spotlight shines down on and it's like, oh, you will marry her. Yeah. And so. Um, yeah, and doves fly everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I thought it was a pretty <laughs> wild circumstance. And here's why. Because before this day, I had had this moment where I felt like in March, I'm going to know who my husband is. And in May, my whole life is going to change. I just, I remember like, I don't Ooh, know where is the story going. I, ah! And so it felt very peculiar that you had a dream that was between March and May. I thought I would call it peculiar, peculiar, but let me just tell you this. I have been through so many dating things and I have gone through the full spectrum. People get really weird and religious and weird about signs about yeah. who they are dating. And I'm like, listen, you do not choose based on signs. You mm-hmm. choose because you want to be with somebody. That is it. I once heard one of my friends said this and it changed my life forever. She goes, I will know he is the one when he is at the altar because he wants to marry me. And I am saying yes, because I want to marry him. That's when I will know mm-hmm. it's the one. So I throw out all signs. So I thought, coincidence that we both have this like March and May thing and real weird that I felt like you were going to call and tell me some, I didn't feel like you were going to call and tell me. I I knew something was happening. And then you told me, but I throw all coincidences. Like I had lived on serendipity and coincidences in past relationships. We both had, and we'll probably talk about that later. I I, want to interject something on that very briefly. Um, and, and I had previously gone on, like we said, we'll probably energe- have a conversation we'll about this, conversation. but I went on a journey for a couple of years where it was like one of these serendipitous things where I felt like, Oh, the signs are this and these things are going to happen. And I hyper spiritualized a lot of my journey. Um, for me, what I realized number one lesson that I learned out of that is love is a choice. Love is a choice. Love Get is, it. Babe. Love is a choice. Not, not some mm-hmm. plan that's designed for you that you have to submit to. It's, it's like, do I want to be with this person? Do I yeah. like this person? And one of the things that people want in all walks of life is they want assurance. A hundred percent. They want to be assured that my decision is right and no problems could happen. And that's why, that's why we want all kinds of signs and serendipity. It's like the movie serendipity. Totally. Like, yeah. Give me some serendipitous sign. And we know we're perfect for each other. Totally. And that means we won't get a divorce and that we means won't they won't fight. cheat on me yep. and all these things. And, 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 and if something assigned me, this was the other note that I wanted to make. If some higher power has assigned to me, this one ex- very specific situation then if it doesn't work out, I'm not to blame. Totally. I ain't at fault. I didn't choose it. I just did what I felt like was the right thing and all the signs pointed to yes and it failed me. And oh, so it's yeah. really about not taking ownership for our or own responsibility. lives. Responsibility. Yeah, so, it's fear driven. I can't tell you how many couples, I just have to hit this because yeah, we work with people all the time. I can't tell you how many couples felt like this person was the one. Oh, yeah. And then they hate their lives in marriage. And, and, and then I'm like, they end up in divorce. Did you choose them? Did you know them? Did you want like, because yeah. I actually think all the things can happen. I do feel like you were a great choice for me. Absolutely. I feel like if I would have chose somebody else, I would have had another great choice. Yep. But I felt like there were lots of wonderful signs. When we look back, we see signs, but yeah, we never things that were beautiful, but paid attention to them I, in the journey. And the one thing that I swore is moving forward in, in my journey of life, like I didn't want signs. Yeah. I, I didn't want to live life by signs. I wanted to live life by my heart. And I think that that's one of the invitations that we're giving you guys out there that are listening to this, whether it's marriage, whether it's, you know, business choices, whatever, yeah. like, being connected to your heart actually makes really good decisions. Yeah. And so I wanted to just... Just don't confuse your heart with your dysfunction. When these things happened, I didn't try and make something out of it that anything no. was about Abby. Me I was neither. just like, oh, that's interesting. But We I'm, both kind of thought that. Huh. You know, it's even when I when I felt like I had this dream that something was going to change. I didn't create expectations of what that had to look like. I was like, all right, well, I'm we'll going to choose to keep unfolds. working and see what unfolds with it. But I'm pretty sure something's happening. Yeah. Didn't base my life around it, but I did say something about it. <laughs> yeah, to- you told me. And, um, you know, it's interesting because we had several dreams at night that really helped. Night dreams, totally. Guide mm-hmm. us. 
Um, well, I guess I had two and you had one, so I had more than you. I had I'm, some other ones. I'm better than you. Um, but I just thought I'd share a couple of them because it goes along with the idea of like the, I wasn't worried about, are you the one I was just looking for? When do I know if you're not? Mm. That was basically, so the first dream I had was the first week we hung out and we were at a wedding, me and you, and there was this makeup artist, which is so random. And he is interrogating you. Like, oh my gosh, Abby's incredible. Are you going to move states to be with her? Are you going to give up your whole life to be with her? Like, she's amazing. She'd be worth, she'd be worth changing everything for it. And he, like, this guy is like going after you. And I am like listening to it. And Sounds like a good dad figure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. And the guy all of a sudden slams his fist down or no, sorry, you slam your fist down. Yeah. And you go, look, I just met her. I don't know anything about her where you're going to take it slow and it's going to be normal. And in the dream, I like swooned because I was like, yes, that is healthy. Yep. But then the, the makeup artist was the guy who was interrogating you comes around and I see he has these three colors. Did he have like wild hair too? He had what it was like wild colorful it was hair or something. So colorful. It was like avatar colors from uh -huh. the blue avatar movie, like uh -huh. those yeah. kind of color hair. So, um, he was, beautiful but so he ended up I he had three colors of makeup and there's this one ugly color and I was like ew I don't want that he starts to mix them he's like and I go I don't want that color and he goes don't you know that the way to get the color you ordered is to mix these mm. and then that was the dream and so I woke up being like okay we are going to go on in the process. This isn't going to be fast. We're going to slowly do it. And whether or not I end up with Justin or someone else, this journey either will become the color I ordered or will be one That's of the colors of the mixing. that will mix for the guy that I am supposed to end up with. Mm -hmm. So it immediately set me up for enjoy this journey. Then as we were friends, I remember wanting to date you because I thought you were cute. Cute. And no. I, I'm a hunk of hunk of burning love. Sexy hotness. Sexy hotness. Yeah. I, I thought I dug you. And so I remember having another dream. And in that dream, we were in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And we there was a bunch of photos that I had. Were we naked in the jungle? <laughs> no. Okay. Was I wearing a loincloth? No. Regular clothes. Okay. Less exciting for you, huh? Kind of. Yeah. So we were going through photos and you were weeding out photos and you're like, this photo is not you. This photo is you. This photo is not you. Mm. And, um, and then we went to, from the jungle, we went to go to Blockbuster. What's Blockbuster, mom? <laughs> I know they're not open anymore. <laughs> it's an ancient barbaric place where Soon they- Redbox will be barbaric too. <laughs> where they kept DVDs captive. Yes, totally. <laughs> That's true. That means I'm so old. It was a it was a place to rent movies from. Uh -huh. And so thanks for catching our hip young people up. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so um, we went there and both of us said, you, I go, you know, I have just not been in the mood for romance lately. I've been in the mood for action. And you're like, I have been in the mood for action. Oh. And I... You both wanted some action, huh? <laughs> I never thought about that. That's funny. I like but, that. So, um, no, I woke up from the movie... The movie. The dream. <laughs> the dream. And I knew, oh, this is not the season for romance with Justin. Mm. This is the season, like, but it was a representation of what you were doing in my life. You were helping me see my identity, who I was and who I wasn't. Yeah. And then I had another dream. And in that dream, I was trying to get ready for a date with you over and over again. And everything kept falling apart. And finally, I was like, I decided to call you and say, I, I can't get ready yet because I want to actually be ready when we go on a date. And I just don't have time. And I woke up from that and knew it was my heart saying, it's not time yet to mm. date you. Mm -hmm. It's not time. So I just wanted to, all of my dreams weren't, are you the one? Are you not the one? Are you right? Are you not? It was helping me connect to what was going on inside of me and helping me go on the journey. Yeah, I love that. Um, do you have any advice for people who, um, how would I put this, are on like Tinder or something? <laughs> about dreams about dreams totally yeah no i'm i'm joking because it feels like dating is so difficult 
And it's just, I jump on the internet. I jump on Tinder and all these different things, dating apps, trying to figure it out. Yeah. And it feels really confusing and overly complicated. Right. But like, I think that there's something really beautiful when you just engage your story and you stop being so fearful and stop trying to make it all happen in different ways that as you just kind of say yes inside of yourself to like, yeah, I'm on a journey of dating and discovery and I I would like to be married someday and all the high stakes are off of it and I'm not trying to control all of it, that there's like beautiful gifts along the way, like, like dreams and, and connection points. I felt like it really helped me connect to myself. I was really working on being connected to myself and being connected to the journey that I was on, being aware that the journey may end up with you or may end up with someone else, absolutely. but that I was meant to learn. And that's what I think a lot of people don't like dating because they think it's only about the outcome. Yeah, the end goal instead of the journey of learning and growing. Yeah, dating is supposed to be, we are learning about ourselves and learning how to love other people and learning what we need and learning how to communicate dating you need dating to get married you need to be learning yeah absolutely that's some good dating advice right there. yeah call this the dating podcast (laughs) okay so um you have that dream you were in vegas i didn't know you're gone you call me you tell me and then you come back into town i did come back into town what happened after i came back into town well we hang out a little bit we are around each other do we pay the bills before or after i had that conversation with you it was after that yeah Everyone's like, what does it mean? What do you mean pay the bills? <laughs> we may tell you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, paying the bills. Where do you want me to go with this story, Babs? Did you just call me Babs? Babs. Babs. Mm-hmm. Where do you want to go? Well, um, we come back. We see each other a little bit. You get a little jealous watching me. I did. I watched her wrestling around with one of my friends. A little casual, little tussle. We're just friends. Yeah. Wrestling. But I was like, who the hell does he think he is wrestling <laughs> around with her? <laughs> She's not his. Mm-hmm. And something starts sparking inside of me. Yep. Something that like out of nowhere starts hitting. And then one night I am getting ready to go to bed and I yeah. like have this gut feeling like Justin's going to call you. Wait. And I was like, uh-uh, I'm not waiting for him. I waited for him for way too long. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Weren't you kind of at the point where you're going to like... The next day, here was my plan. The next day my She's plan... She's so many good plans. ...was to go talk to this guy... That I was convinced would like me if he knew yeah. that I even like I was like wrap him around your finger. He'll well, say yes. I figured he thought that I was out of his league. So I figured I'd help him be like, hey, I'm in the same league. You want to you wanna, <laughs> hang out? You want to you want to take me out on a date? Yeah. You can. Yeah. It was yeah. one of those yeah. kind of things where uh-huh. I was like, eh, oh, yeah, I d- wasn't sure if I liked this guy or not, but I was ready to like move forward and get on with my life. And so I had this feeling that you were going to call me, but I'm like, whatever, I go to sleep. I wake up in the middle of the night, dead awake, where I'm like, oh my gosh. Out of gosh, a dead sleep, and you're just like, bam. What just happened? Mm-hmm. And so then- Like somebody came and shook you and screamed in your face, fire. Fire! <laughs> yes. And so I wake up, and I go to look at my phone to be like, what is happening? And I pick up my phone, which was on silent back then, and it's- No as, vibrate whatsoever, just As silent. soon as I pick up my phone- you and call. Yes, I call. And I was laying in bed. I don't know. Was it, how late was it? 1130 at night? It was or something? probably 1230. It was like super, super, uber late. There's no reason for her to be up. That's and there's not no re- uber late. But um, for you, that was well, uber late. I for this had to old work man, in the this old soul at yes. 20 some years old who worked early every morning. That yeah, was you got up at like 4 a.m. So that was late to you. So, uh, you know, out of nowhere, like I'm having this overwhelming emotion of I have to be with her. I have to be with her. I have to date her. I don't, I need to tell her. I need to tell her right now that I have to be with her and date her. And I don't know what this is going to look like. And so I just start flipping out and I grab my phone. I call her. Yeah. And she wakes and and my intuition got me ready for that. She's woken up and grabs a phone, which I don't know. I think maybe I was surprised in the moment, but not, I don't know. I just, it, it feels like you go on autopilot. Yeah. You were just rambling. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, I think I like you and I feel ready to do this. And I, da, 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 da. I just need, I don't know what to do, but I need to tell you right now. I don't know what this right is going to look like, but, but I want a date or something. We got to be together. Just think about it and get back to me. <laughs> I was okay. like, what So Mr. Happened? Smooth shows up. <laughs> yes. And I was shocked because at that point I had so killed it in my heart. I never saw that as an option. So I was shocked. I went and shock and awe, baby. Shock and awe. (laughs) And I've been shocked ever since. And odd. And odd. (laughs) Aww. 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 Um, So 
I end up being like, what just happened? I tell my roommates who are like, that's crazy. But I think, well, I'll wait with the other guy since Justin's doing this. I'll see what comes of this. Yeah. What happened after that? Well, I then like there's some gaps that are just missing there. You in just my forget brain. all of it. So then what happened is um, we kind of had some conversations back and forth about like if we should date or if we should not date. And Justin really um, started picking up on the fact that I wasn't sure if I wanted to date. Did I? Yeah. Um, cause are I had you making got, that up. No, I had gotten to this point in when you had broken up with me that I was like, if it's not him, it's going to be someone better. And I had begun scanning the crowds for the other people. And so I just wasn't sure. And so you came to me. I can't believe you don't remember this because this is like a big part of our story. Are we talking about when I went to England? No. No. Okay, you tell me. So you came. You're this is why you get man. married. So somebody, so, else you, remembers so, your so somebody stuff. else remembers your stuff and they scratch your back <laughs> and shave it. Okay, I'm just going to be honest. At some point, it becomes <laughs> shaving your back for you. Oh, that's, that's why surreal. you get married. That's why. The only reason. Yeah. And so you came to me and you said, hey, I can tell that you're not quite sure if you want to do this. Oh, was that when I did that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember all that. So I decide that like she's, she's in her process. Now I remember. See, yeah. ah, that's a good thing I married you. <laughs> I would have forgot this, <laughs> but I do remember it. So I, I just realized that she needed to go on her journey of being free to make any decision that she wanted. And, and, and I said, I said to her, look, here's the deal. Um, I'm in, I'm into this. And, and I actually had had a conversation with a, with the guy I was working for, Sean, I was on a plane and I had said to him like, look, man, I really feel like I want to be with this girl. I think, should I, shouldn't I, what's going on? And he just said, honestly, I don't know if another girl like Abby is going to come around. And if she does, you know, there's grace, probably there will be, of course there will be, you know, he's going through that journey with me, but he's like, it's probably gonna be another five years. Yeah. You know, it's a concept of you're going to have to wait a while for something like this. This is a very unique situation that you're inside Aww. of. And I, and, and, you know, he, you know, he asked me the question, um, could you be okay with never being friends with her ever again? Because that's not going to be a possibility at some point. I think that, that was a profound piece of advice because I had to decide like, it wasn't like, oh, this is just a romance partner I want to go have sex with. Can I do <laughs> life? you did. Do I want to do life? I can do life, but do I want to do life without this friend in my world? What yeah. does this friend add? And it really sent me on a journey of going, oh my gosh, I'm fully in. And so then I, I, I come to Abby, fully bought into this situation. I just say to her, look, here's the deal. I like it because it wasn't, can you live without her? Because you should always be able to say you can live without yeah, somebody. Yeah, you can absolutely live without somebody. Like it, I yes. can tomorrow. You know, yep. like I don't want to, but if right. you decide to walk out, I, my life's going to go on and I'm going to make a beautiful life down yeah. the road. Um, but I don't want to do that life without you. And so in that moment, I just said to you, um, I want you to feel the freedom to find out if you want this. So if you need to go date multiple other people and go on a journey with that, please, by all means, do so. Find out what you want. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick around here for a while. I and think it, you said, I'll wait as long as you want me to wait. And if you tell me to stop waiting, then I will. Yeah, something along those lines. But it wasn't like I was going to be a puppy dog nope. that lived it forever. Like that. It wasn't an unworthy place inside nope. of me that's like, Oh my God, I'll just wait and wait. Cause I've seen guys, totally guys, girls, they wait forever hoping that someone will see them. And that wasn't my thing. I was like, no, I actually choose you. Yep. So when you don't want this, that's fine. I'll respect that. But I'm here until you make that decision. So what'd that do for you? Oh, it was like the magic sauce. <laughs> The magic sauce. I don't know. You heard it it. first here on the Connected Life. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, just I think anytime. And ironically, I had done this with you once during the journey. Also, I had said the same thing. Like, hey, go date all the girls you need. There's something because you were telling it to me. First, I felt loved that you noticed. Like you could tell I wasn't quite ready to say yes. So I felt loved that you knew me and noticed that. And then that you were so confident and comfortable, like there's no desperation. And I needed that because I grew up with a mom that needed me. Yeah. She needed me to be okay. She was living off. Yeah. And so I think I needed to know that you could be okay if I didn't choose you. And as soon as I heard, like, let's be honest, you told me that. And by the end of the night, I was like, I'm in. (laughs) Totally. It wasn't even like a long thing. It was like, Oh, that was so attractive. You setting me free and, and having confidence. Like you don't need me. You want me, but you don't, you don't need, need me. me. Yeah, I was you're like, not my source. yes. 
Yep. Sign me up. Yeah. And it's the idea of freedom. It goes back to choice. One of the greatest gifts given to all of humanity is free will. And sometimes it's exercised poorly, but in that, in that journey of free will, like there's nothing more liberating or freeing when another human being actually respects and honors another's free will. Yeah. And that is the, that is the crux of love, free will. Yeah. And, and, and to me, I'm assuming that for you that again, that was super inviting to go, Oh, I get a choice in this. Man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was very sexy. So set me free. So then you ended up asking me to date you and it accidentally wound well, up. Here's being... what, here's what happened. Um, the, the short of the story on that was I was in England and the official moment we, we were having an exchange cause over there speaking over email and the official exchange happened on March 1st where I said, will you date me? Like it yeah. was, it was an official, will you date me? Mm-hmm. And, uh, she said, what'd you say? I think I said, I guess. I mean, like you had said, let's date. Like you, the way you said it is like, we're dating. It wasn't even like you asked. So I was like, okay. Maybe I told you what was happening. Yeah. <laughs> but I was in. At that point, I was, you had already known that I was in. So we it were was, in. It was so a we bit started alpha dating. alpha male barbaric, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So that was March 1st. And then. Did, did you want to share anything someone on? Someone had told yeah. me that March 4th would change my whole life. Yeah. That on March 4th, I would like, like the name of the date i would march forth into on march 4th you will march forth into the next season of life into all the things that you've been needing and the promises yeah yeah and stuff like that and so i landed back in la on march 4th and she picked me up at the airport and we made out we did (laughs) and then we started paying the bills nah yeah that that paying the bills is making out yeah that's what i'm saying i mean we started paying the bills i know but paying the bills sounds so much well, pay the bills that. means a lot more worse than that nowadays. Nowadays, because we're married. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's not just making out, is it? Not now. It's rocking your casbah. Rock the casbah. So, so, um, so it was awesome and it was great. And so we got married. So we started dating March 1st. And a little bit about the engagement. Or do we want to share that on another time with them? We'll share that on another time. Do we tell them what happened? Like the, the timeline or do we just leave it at that? I think we tell them the timeline. Okay. So we have officially gotten, we got, we got together dating March 1st uh-huh. and March 22nd, we got engaged uh-huh. and then May 31st. We got married. We got married. We and got there's married. a it fun so engagement story that's super crazy and wild. Yep. And we'll share that. And it epitomizes every relationship where there's miscommunication. Yep. And wild things happen. Yep. Um, and we'll share all that. And we're probably going to dig into our sex life. So for all of the men out there that are like, is this all this podcast is going to be as you guys is telling your love story? No, we're getting to the stuff you'll care about, like sex. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Like how to have hot, Justin, hot sex. Justin. Hot, I mean like good. Oh. You know, like sweet. Oh. And connected Tender. sex. Connect because it's the connected Hot, life. sweaty, connected sex <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> oh, gosh. That embarrasses the neighbors from hearing oh, you. Oh, goodness. Oh, wow. Okay, well, did so. Did I do that? I did that. You did that. Oh, you can't stop me because I'm my own person. I can't believe we've taken two will. episodes to tell our story. It's really foundationally um Yeah, deliberate. foundational. It's foundational. We're going to get. Because the next part of the story, we're going to jump out of our love stories as as, as, we're going to, we're going to spend three or four episodes total on our story and then get into a lot of things. And, and we're, we're peppering them with some wisdom that we learned throughout the way, but we're hoping that you guys all get to decide like, Oh, um, Again, our journey of love, journey of life can be messy. Yep. And it doesn't have to play by all the rules. Follow a formula. Yeah. It's just, this is who we are and this is our unique journey. And hopefully it inspires you all to uh, To want a unique journey for you. And a unique story. I remember hearing so many stories and being like, I want a story that is interesting and epic. And to have a story like that, you have to be willing to live. You have to be willing to risk. Yep. And, um, if we could inspire anyone, it's to hope for a good story and to choose into love in healthy ways. Awesome. So everybody, thanks for joining. We want you to head over to, uh, iTunes, iTunes, subscribe and write a review. review. 
big deal for us. Every time you hit subscribe, that's going to give us an opportunity to reach more people as yep. that kind of pops up on their list up there. And also we got a facebook.com slash, uh, the connected life podcast, and you can visit us there, subscribe. So you can see all of our and updates on the Instagram, on the Instagram, on the, so Insta- old. On the Instagram, grandma, on the Instagram. Oh, you get on there and there'll be pictures of all kinds of things. Yeah. We'll post about every new thing that we do. On Type in Instagram. Abby Stumball, ABI Stumball and Justin Stumball. And hopefully I'm doing more Instagram things by then. And that's, that's all we have to say. That's all, that's all we got for you. Hey, let's figure out a way to sign out on this. Because last time was at uh, Transform and Roll Out. No, that was the first time. Was that the first time? Mm-hmm. That was from uh, Transformers. Yeah, I got that from Optimus Prime. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. I never would have guessed. Transform and Roll Out. How about we just like always end awkwardly like, and bye. And then we just fade off. And bye.